Hi there, it's Rob Sayer. Welcome to a quick screen tutorial on syncing a QLab3 file with some simple and easy to use DMX lighting control using the LX console software. The LX console software is a free piece of software and it's quite a simple lighting controller that you can run on the Mac and you can run it on the same Mac as the QLab3 file. And the idea here is basically you're just going to create lighting cues within LX console and then fire them from QLab3. Other than a Mac and uh, LX console, you'll obviously need the QLab3 software. And in order to get the protocols and functions required, you'll need at least the basic QLab Pro version rather than the straight three version. Don't forget though, you can also hire QLab by the day rather than purchasing a long license for it. And this works out quite cheap for small shows. So let's get going. Before we start, I just want to talk a little bit about how you're going to get DMX out of the Mac and into the lighting system. One of the simple ways of doing it is to use something like a Entec DMX Pro or one of the copies. Uh, is a fairly cheap way of running USB to one universe of DMX. The LX console software also outputs ArtNet, so if you have an ArtNet node or something that will spit ArtNet uh, into your lighting system and turn it into something usable, then you could always use that as well. So say you've got uh, your Entec or your ArtNet node the next thing you want to do is to download the LX console software. I'll put all the links in the descriptions of this video so that you can find your way around. The thing to do is with the LX console download page, which is uh, which I've got in front of me, is to download the latest build, which is slightly further down the page, rather than the current release. The next thing to do is to start to get to use um, LX console itself. Now my screen's going to be a little bit messy now, so I'm going to try and make it somehow so that you can see stuff a little better. Maybe if I put my QLab all the way across the screen, it's nice and dark, and then I fire up my LX console. So when you fire up LX console, you kind of see a screen that looks a bit like a, a common lighting desk uh, with channels and stuff like that. There's also some other things that you want to open which don't necessarily always appear for you uh, when you open the software for the first time. In order to get these things to appear, the thing I want to fire up is I'll fire up the virtual keyboard so you can see what's happening um, when we're working with it. You can also use the shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts, but you can't see me typing those. Uh, we can go to view and open up the live controls. We'll need those later. We'll need to make sure we have the live controls open later. So I'll just kind of put these over here for now. And I'm also going to look up one more thing, which is called the cue sheet. So in order to record cues uh, on LX console, you do a similar thing to you do on most kind of theater lighting desks. You call up channels, uh, you can do one through six uh, full, and you can see they come here. Um, there's other ways of controlling um, using wheels and stuff like that. But at the moment, we're just gonna get some channel numbers in. I suggest you try and learn a little bit of how to use LX console before you really try this in, in practice. So you create, uh, set up your cues as you normally do. You could hit record and you can hit record five, enter, and it will create cue five. Now, what that does here, when you created the cue, um, on this cue sheet, there's um, some information here about the cue number and the time and stuff like that. You can change the time by doing time to enter, stuff like that. Sort of thing that you do on most theater desks. In the box over here on the right hand side, um, on the queue sheet, we have the option to put in the, name, the details of the queue. Um, so I'm going to put this in this final queue. I've got some other queues up here. I'm not going to bother filling in all these other fields, but the, the reason I've put this queue name in here via this queue sheet is because we're going to do something with it later on. So basically, I've got some queues. Now we can see in, on LX console here, there's a few different uh, windows that uh, you, the, you can see here, there's the queues itself, there's the groups window, the subs window. The one we want open is the one we want to look at is the live window. And what happens then, if I set up my queue one, so I could go over to my live, uh, control, live control and go to queue one, we can see what's happening on queue one. Seven, eight, nine and 10 are going to full. Queue two, all channels go to black. Queue three, go back to full. Q4, five second fade to black, Q5, one to six come up. So there's basically different cues. As I say, it's important that we have this window open because what we're gonna do is we need to have this window open when we connect QLab 
to the file itself. There's a few different things we need to do um, with LX Console to get the OSC commands connected up. The first thing we need to do is make sure that it's listening to OSC and there's a couple of ways of doing that. Up on the live window here, make sure we're in the live window here, there's this toggle on and off for OSC. There's also um, an external file and external and there's OSC in which is the kind of thing that we're listening to at the moment. So that's what's happening. It's listening to OSC. We also need to set up the OSC ports and stuff. Um, so we can do that by going to preferences and it opens up this little window. We can look through all these different things and we're looking for OSC. And in this case, there's a few options here. I've got it set to the loopback address 127.0.0.1 and a port of 53000, which is the um, one we're going to be using with QLab. And then I've also got this box checked, which is called respond to Q messages. So we've got all those set up, so that's quite cool. Now, when we come to create, create things in QLab, we need to set up QLab as well. So in the preferences of QLab, we are looking at OSC. We're looking for um, the first uh, patch of the first OSC patch, and this would normally be just uh, called something else to start with. So if we called it LX Console, uh, the default name, we change it to LX Console. We've set the IP address, which is the loopback, which means that it's going to send it to this Mac, back to this Mac. And we've got the port set the same, so 53000 is the port. So if we were going to create an OSC queue to make uh, LX Console go, we could... I'm just going to move this so you can see what's happening. So we could just put in a, an OSC queue. We could check that the destination of the queue is happening, and it's going to... Uh, the LX console, the destination one. We're going to make sure that it says uh, start the queue and we're going to get it to start queue one. So we're going to have a go at that. Let's hit go. What you can see there is that queue one is going. So that's how you would basically, you could create your queues. You can do another one. We could start queue two. Set as two and then try going that queue. You see that's queue two going. So you can see it's really, really simple to connect up LX Console. Don't forget LX Console will be sending out DMX uh, via the Entech Pro or via your ArtNet node. And this is a, a quite a quick way of doing it. I've got an even quicker way of actually doing this thanks to a, a website where uh, has made available a brilliant um, little script thing that you can basically pull all of the queues from your queue sheet. So say you had, I don't know, 100 queues here. It will pull in that information into QLab and then set them all up as goes for those queues. That's good because then you could um, you can record up all of your show and stuff and then uh, create this queue sheet and then pull it over into QLab without having to make individual queues. Of course, you can then move the queues around in the queue list as much as you want. This particular script uh, comes from a site which I'll put the link in the comments. It's uh, basically a little piece of Apple script and there's information on how you can use it here. What you can do is you can download this script, which is the file is down, uh, down at the bottom here. You can download this script and it looks like something like this. So um, there's a lot of Apple script uh, information and so basically what you can do with that is obviously you can fire that script any way you like on your Mac. But of course you can also fire Apple script in QLab. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically pull up QLab. We're going to create a script queue. And then we're just going to paste the script into the script queue and then hit compile. And now what happens is basically, um, we just obviously you don't need to run this every show, but I'm going to just show you how to do it. So you wouldn't necessarily want this in your main, um, this queue in your main queue list because obviously you don't want to fire it during the show. Um, but basically what happens if I fire this script up, it first asks me what the lowest queue number is. In this case, it's queue one. Then it asks me what the highest queue number is. In this case, we've got queue five, but it could be 100, 200, however many queues. And something happens, and LX Console kind of does something. And then if we go back to the queue list, you can see what's happened here now is we've got a load of OSC queues. Each one has a number, which is LX1, LX2, LX3, LX4, LX5. And the name of the queue that I pulled in from, which I put in the uh, queue sheet, has been pulled in. So if we just try and 
put everything so you can see what's going on. You can see now, if I hit go on that first queue, second queue, and so on. So you can see how easy that is really. Um, as I say, as long as you can get your uh, DMX output sorted out with LX console, as long as you can set up your OSC to talk over the loopback address of the Mac, and also if you have QLab that will run OSC messages, so not the free version, but one of the, one of the basic pro versions, uh, you can quite easily create a little show uh, for lighting and then integrate it quite simply with the rest of your sound cues, maybe some video cues, and fire it all from QLab. I hope that's been useful. I'll see you soon.